Let me start by thanking John for that generous introduction and to say it's great to be here this morning, especially given this conference's focus on continuous improvement, working tirelessly to be innovators and leaders in the steel industry is what we at Nucor do. All 20,000 plus of our family members located in 14 different countries. We believe that this sort of focus on continuous improvement is important for the entire industry, the entire manufacturing industry. But staying focused on improving is very difficult today. It's very difficult when your company is struggling to stay afloat. When economic conditions turn down, planning how you build for a better future may seem like the last thing you should have on your mind. But we believe that these difficult times are the most important times to envision what we want tomorrow to be and to enact a plan to make sure that we all get there. At Nucor, we are not only working to be ready for the revitalized global economy, but we are aggressively and fearlessly taking the steps necessary to get there. When I think of someone who embodies this spirit, the person who comes to my mind is one of America's most iconic action heroes, John Wayne who was recently voted third on a list of America's favorite film stars. Now, I'm not sure if that audio played for you, okay? Did it, was any, everyone able to hear that? No, okay. Well, then let me recap what he said. He was talking about how important it is to stay focused on your goals in life and how no matter what happens to you early in life, you should stay focused and committed to your long-term goals. And why that's important is when you think about John Wayne's career, what many of us may not remember or may not know is that his first starring role was in a film titled The Big Trail. Now, you probably haven't heard of that film because it was a big, it was a huge flop. And this setback almost ended John Wayne's career. For most of the next decade, he received nothing more than a series of minor roles. In fact, in one film, he was cast as a corpse. Nine years after his first starring role in that huge flop, Wayne had his breakout part in Stagecoach, which propelled him into major stardom. He would go on to make over 90 films and win dozens of awards, including the famed Academy Award for Best Actor. Therefore, it seems appropriate to me that Mr. Wayne be our guide today in saddling up to face this exciting, yet very challenging time for all of us in this room. I want to take a few moments to share with you Nucor's understanding of where we are, what the next several years of recovery will bring, and how all of us can work together to restore our place in the world as a nation that builds and makes things in the future. So first, let's start with where are we today? Where do we stand at the end of the first quarter 2010. I think we all have to agree that the last couple of years are living up to the name being given to them, the Great Recession, the worst economic downturn since the Great Depression. As John Wayne said, the fire is not discriminating. It burns anything in its path for whatever reason. And I believe all of us in this room today have felt the flames of that fire. Globally, world GDP, which had been growing at about 5% in 2007, slowed in 2008 and dropped dramatically in 2009. 
world trade volume, which increased by 7% in 2007, was down an astonishing 14.4% in 2009. Across the U.S., we saw the impact of this global crisis ripple throughout our economy. So far, we have seen over 8.4 million jobs lost in this recession. 8.4 million people out of work since the beginning of this recession. With over a quarter of those coming out of the manufacturing sector. Job losses have been more severe than in any recession in recent years. In fact, each recession has brought harder downturns and longer, slower recovery times. So why is that? What has changed? We believe it is the direct result of the loss of manufacturing jobs in America. From June of 1998 to March of 2010, more than a third of all manufacturing jobs in America were lost. A third of jobs lost in manufacturing. And that's over six million jobs in a short 10-year span. To further put this in perspective, American manufacturing jobs are at their lowest point in nearly 70 years. And this situation is critical because every manufacturing job supports an additional 5.2 jobs through increased wages, infrastructure investments, and taxes. And because manufacturing jobs typically pay 50% more than equivalent jobs in retail, these jobs lost cannot be replaced by a service economy. So when manufacturing jobs disappear, we see those losses multiplied throughout our economy. We can see it evidenced in today's unemployment rate. The government reports an official unemployment rate that was 9.7% in the month of March. 9.7% official unemployment. This itself is historically high, being exceeded only briefly by a unemployment rate during the 1981 recession. And if you'll recall, we were sitting at about 4.5% unemployment in 2007. So the increase is by far the largest spike in unemployment in over 40 years. But our situation is even worse than the official classification numbers capture. The government also releases a, what they call a comprehensive measure of unemployment, or what we call real unemployment. Real unemployment includes those individuals who used to work full-time but now can only find part-time employment. And it includes those individuals who have stopped looking for work because they've simply given up. They haven't been able to find a job, so they give up looking and somehow they're no longer counted among the unemployed. When these people are factored in, the real unemployment rate for March was almost 17 percent, 17 percent real unemployment. Our country's unemployment number will continue to rise if we do not restore strength to our manufacturing sector here in America. 